Good morning. Boy, it's been a crazy week. I think every week is a crazy week. In fact, I had one of our friends said to me, Ilian, I think I've talked to him, talked about him before, said, you know, you ought to just hire a film crew to follow you around because I bet you'd have interesting stuff to put on video. Oh my goodness, I'm exhausted. A lot of it would have been slow and tedious this week. Um, I'm doing inventory and making sure that everything that is in the shop is in the system. And boy, howdy, have we found a lot of things that are not in the system. So, um, yeah, I slap my hand because I clearly have not done a good job with that. But when we're done, I'm having help. Uh, Tamara, who's been a long time hanger outer at the shop, ha has been a great volunteer helping me count tedious stuff and we visit because, you know, lockdown has been a tough gig for all of us and we haven't had human company very much. So thank you, Tamara. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there will be prezzies in it for you for sure. Um, it's spring. Spring has sprung. Let me see if I can zoom you around. I'm going to zoom you around to my daffodil stand. Actually, I'll walk over there in a bit, even though my lawn will be wet. It's, ugh, I hate wet lawn. I'm not a fan of the lawn anyway. I like the way it looks from a distance. I don't like to go in the lawn. I have definitely some sensory issues. Um, and then in the garden, I'm not going to walk you to the garden because that's going across a lot of lawn, a lot of mushy lawn. But I have decided that there is a vegetable that is the daffodil of vegetables, and it's the Swiss chard. I never planted Swiss chard in my Swiss chard in my garden, but I have chard in my garden, and I have dug that thing and turned it over twice now, and or is it three times? No, I, twice. I've turned it over twice because two years, and there is chard in my yard. The herbs are still hanging on, and I have a single garlic coming up. Woo! Probably won't be here when we move because. Our kitchen is now being done. Um, I will show you, actually, probably Sunday, I'll show you a video of the house progress because stuff happened. Stuff happened. We might actually have electricity this week. Woo! So uh, electricity, we got pruned. The tree, the poor tree got pruned. The I hope not much. Um, the kitchen, the floors are in. I've said that before. They've been in for a while. The kitchen cabinets are going in. David lined them up, but I guess they're actually being installed now. And then, um, what else happened? Oh, and the bathroom tile's going in. Rather slowly, but it's going in. Anyway, that's what's happening at the house. And then inventory here. But mostly, and this is like completely leaping topic, because when I was in California and we did our little trek around the mall, um, there were a bunch of designer stores in there. And I took some video footage of what the fashion was in the windows. And it was kind of surprising, but also kind of enlightening. Um, and I'm going to pop those clips in right after I sort of explain what I'm talking about. So the first clip you're going to see is the 1970s cometh back. So there are some of those designers are pumping out the 70s print on print on um, uh, bell bottoms, crazy 70s stuff that was actually a little bit before my time. So I think that kind of means I can wear it. I was a kid. Does that count? Can I wear the 70s stuff if I did? That's my my theory is, is that if you wore this style once, you shouldn't wear it again. Like the 80s, I should never do 80s because I can't pull off 80s. I'm too old. It looks like I'd never got rid of the stuff in my closet. Comment below what you think about that. Anyway, so the 1970s is back, which means broomstick skirts and granny square vests. What do you think? I'll put a picture in of a gal I saw last year in a granny square jacket that I thought was super cute. So um, it, I think, I think gals, it's time to pull out the granny squares. Time to make some clothing out of granny squares think it's time. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Am I, am I being controversial or do you think it's a good idea? Granny squares. Actually, I kind of have a love-hate affair. I lean more towards the early 60s where it's a lot of solids and slim lines and um, dresses that are not too curvy, mostly because I have none and they look good on me. But um, I think we can blend the two and be comfortable in our 70s. So I don't know. I'm going to think about that. 
I'm going to think about. Maybe I'll do some fashion. I'll go look at my wardrobe and see what I can do. Or maybe, maybe make a granny score sweater. I still think it would look good. So anyway, yes, the 70s. Then um, we went to another shop where, um, really cool shop, and I will put the name on the, pic, on the video footage because I've forgotten the name. I have to consult Kelly. I think she remembers. Anyway, they had, their the a lot of their theme was magnolia and flowers, and they had made a magnolia cardigan that was um, basically a couple, two, three giant flowers in the front with lots of space between so that whatever you wore that cardigan over blouse wise would really show through. So you definitely want it to be a backdrop. And um, it was $5,000, $5,000 for a crochet cardigan. It was pretty. Don't know if I'd do it, but it was really pretty. And I'm kind of digging the magnolia right now, given the new house. And then the other thing there that I thought was rather really fascinating is, um, you know, the fade stuff. There was a fade pullover and I know that pattern exists. And this designer borrowed the fade to go into fashion. So do you know what that is? They've just taken, um, what's her name? The fade and turned it into a sweater. That's a fade sweater. So that yes. is, that's the knitting industry impacting fashion. fashion. Now, let me know if some of you who follows fashion could say that the fade existed before it was put into the knit world. But I kind of feel like, and I don't stay up on top of fashion, so maybe I'm wrong. I kind of feel like fashion is borrowing from the knitwear in the knitters, the crafters world. What do you think? I mean, crochet, only crafters can do that. So, yeah, I don't know. That one threw me. That one was weird. And then we had a really nice conversation with the gals in that shop because they're, you know, if you work in fashion, you like to sew, you like to craft. So we were kindred spirits, even though they really love the fashion part of it. So that was uh, that trip, and it's been a long time coming. I should have put it up before now. But interesting, very interesting looking at fashion to maybe not guide what we do in knitting and crochet and lace making, but at least to inform it and to think about what are we doing and what's happening in that other kind of corner of the world. And I didn't really ever think about this stuff. I just knew what I liked until um, I started doing the costuming and the sewing and trying to get things to fit me perfectly. I kind of gained a new appreciation for the fashion industry and just exactly what they're doing when they do these lines and how much money, as I understand it, like there is no profit in couture. You make no money. You do it because you love it and you hope, I assume, that your money gets made in the rollout to the off the rack. I don't know. Anybody, does anybody out there know anything about couture? I don't, I don't want to say things that, I see a lot of YouTubers who say things with a lot of confidence that are not correct. And I'm not going to name names, but one of them is a very major fashion historical person. They say it with confidence, therefore it's the truth, when it's not historically accurate. Because they have other things to do and they don't have time to look everything up. So, um, but saying it with confidence is not something that I want to do. Anyway, I don't know enough about couture, but I, would, I think I need to learn more about couture. Let's put it that way. And as I learn it, I'll tell you about it. Um... Yeah, um, I f already told you and I th showed you in the last video that I finished the orange blob uh, project and I have like two inches on the third and final crochet task that I have to complete soon, like in the next week. And I haven't had a chance. I've been exhausted after counting ne knitting needles. Oh, yes, by the way, back to that, back to inventory. So on the 15th, we have an ad coming out with Piecework Magazine. We love Piecework, by the way. And if any of you um, are looking for a really good historical handwork, uh, all the kind of stuff that you know we love at Black Sheep, knitting, crochet, bobbin lace, tatting, lace making, embroidery, blah, 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 all that stuff, it's in Piecework. That's the only multi-craft magazine I really feel like is left. If you know of another one, let me know because I would love to see it because like Piecework is the only one I really have left in my I love this magazine lineup. 
but um, we've got an ad dropping there in the middle of March. And if you want to get a head start on the ad, I am adding stuff to clearance like right now. And it's going to be 40 and 50% off everything that's going in there because I'm going to move soon and I really need to get stuff, get rid of stuff. Um, in addition to that, Kelly and I are really honing down what we carry in the shop. Um, oh, also, once I get moved, it's online only. I will not be doing um, appointments anymore because the shop has to move to storage. So I'm going to be working out of a storage unit and until I can find like warehousey space. But from here on out, the shop either goes to Kelly, it goes into storage, or you see us at shows. Live shopping is about to end. So um, if you want to see the shop in its current state, which is slightly disheveled, now's the time to come. Um, I am looking for, if anybody knows of a good place to house things, for the online shop, let me know because I'm looking for a very inexpensive space for that. And um, yeah, start checking the start checking the um, clearance bins because 40 and 50 percent off. Um, most everything worsted weight will go in there, uh, except for the tweed because we'll keep that. Um, there'll be a whole lot of fingering weight, and um, yeah, there'll even be some lace weight stuff that's going in there. I'm pretty sure. Um, beads. I've got beads to put in. I don't know if that's going to go to clearance right away, but it probably will soon. Um, knitting needles are already in clearance. We put those in yesterday. So, yeah, keep your eye out for clearance. Um, that's it for me today. Um, I hope that you're having a good time. I am still, Kelly and I are both, like on a daily basis, checking in about the situation in Ukraine. It's just, it makes us sick. It really makes us sick. Um, those patterns are still coming. It just takes me a little time, especially when I have other you know, orders to fill, wholesale orders to fill. I found one that should have gone out that I didn't get out, that I thought I got out. Um, retail orders to fill. So um, yeah, things to do, lots of things. So I'm just sort of keeping my head afloat right now, but um, I'm still thinking about them and definitely want to do something. Alrighty. See you Sunday. Bye.